Good afternoon and welcome to Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me is Ted Bragg. He is the head of U.S. Fixed Income at NASDAQ with a Treasury Market Update. Thanks very much for joining us today. It's been quite a wild ride in the equity markets. And our question to you is, did you also see that volatility in the Treasury market? We did, and uh, very busy. So from an overall market share, volumes were, were incredibly high, Some, similar to what you'd have in a Brexit or, or large election result. Uh, we had some uh, new uh, high yields, uh, low in prices. So the 10-year note, actually yesterday, early morning, traded at 289. So that's the lowest in four years. And intraday last week, as we had lots and lots of supply coming to the market, we saw some pretty good moves as the equity market was gapping. All right. And one of the headlines around this was that the Fed is starting to delever its balance sheet. And while it might not be selling securities, it is allowing securities to mature or roll off the balance sheet. Do you think that lack of buying is going to hurt the oversupply situation? So what you really have happening is, is uh, the natural buyer, the natural decider of interest rates has to come to the market. Mm -hmm. All the central banks have been out there with kind of this, uh, we're going to keep the levels low. So now where does that interest rate for a 10-year note or two-year note, one from the U.S. government, and then the interest from the potential investors? If you really had lots and lots of cash and the U.S. Treasury market didn't offer you any, uh, any return, the Fed could suck that up. Now, what level can we get to so that all of a sudden 2% on a two-year, 210, 212 is an investment objective? It's also the additional supply that I would say worries me more than the Fed not participating. We were at 241 in November. We're at 289. But if we know that they have to issue another trillion dollars worth of securities in addition to not just buying back what was currently issued, that you would think would push rates even higher. Uh, forecasts, a lot of people right around 3%. This morning, Goldman Sachs came out with, we think it's going to three and a half. Uh, BlackRock came out with, we actually think the bond rally is not over and there's still a lot of money to be put to work uh, and things look okay for bonds. So we don't know yet. How does this impact your outlook in terms of interest rates for this year? Yeah, so I think uh, with all the additional supply, rates should be a bit higher. What uh, the new Fed governor, interesting, last Monday, first day, Powell, was when we probably had some of the bigger equity volatility. This morning, right as I was coming in here, he came out with a statement talking about how they're ready to react. But the question for interest rates are, is the Fed trying to get us to what we would consider normalcy, where they're no longer involved uh, and there's still an easy monetary policy, or are they trying to now tame inflation? And that, I think, is a bigger issue as we look at economic numbers and what some other central banks are talking about. So it seems like the overall global markets are going to start to take their cues from the bond market. The bond market is going to decide. So whether it's tomorrow morning, uh, CPI, uh, the following day, uh, PPI, manufacturing numbers, retail sales tomorrow. Um, UK this morning talked about higher inflation numbers and whether there weren't all of a sudden now starting to pull back. So you have to assume when central banks start to mention the I word, you know, that's, right. a, that's a negative. That means rates are going to be higher and prices could be lower. So those are the key numbers that you're going to look for. Are those inflationary type of data, CPI and PPI and so forth? Absolutely. Are those the key numbers that you're yeah. really going to look at? Yeah, that, those would be the numbers. The, probably the big trigger, and people are pointing as a trigger for the equity market, was the payroll number. When I think we sat down the day before, there was an uh, average hourly earning increase of 2.9%. Mm -hmm. And that was so much larger than anybody anticipated. And they thought, uh oh, now does the Fed have to now start to really start to r ratchet up the rates to keep inflation from popping up? And I think that caused some much more selling in the equity market, or initially thoughts around selling. It's pretty amazing how good economic data can really throw a wrench in the equity market for that reason because of interest rates. And, and not only are we going to get strong economic data, but you've got an awful lot of uh, fiscal stimulus. Uh, and then yesterday we also had an infrastructure plan, which is, again, potentially more spending uh, that can fuel the economy. And good news, uh, lower uh, unemployment, but all of a sudden that means higher rates. Well, to wrap it up, a lot of questions that we get on trade talks is, how do you gauge what's a good auction? Explain to us what the auction process is, and how does it get an A plus or a D minus? Yeah, so uh, Treasury has to issue securities. They're going to use its primary dealers uh, to really kind of set the market on where it should come to market. For example, on, Tuesday, on Thursday, we're going to get an announcement of two years, five years, and seven years. Uh, you have a few days before they actually come to auction uh, for the dealers to kind of solicit uh, who would like to be involved, who would like to buy this new issue, at what rate should it settle. But right at 1 o'clock, on the days that it's scheduled to be auctioned, the primary dealers put in their bids, as do the large direct bidders, the large money funds, the large pension funds, the large central banks. 
immediately or almost immediately after, uh, seconds after, you get the results. Mm -hmm. And it's really the disparity between where it was trading in the screens live versus where that result com comes out. If, the, if it was all of a sudden much more expensive, you would now think that maybe some people missed the auction and it was very well received and everybody needed them. Last week, we moved around so much because of the equity volatility, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people covered all of their shorts. So we had these gaps post-auction where nobody really needed them anymore. You had to play defense with the equity market down so much. And it was when it was time to actually bid, you couldn't bid the price that they were currently trading at, and the market had to go a little bit lower. All right. Well, thank you for all the insight, as always. Traders, thank you for joining me today. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.